Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition. Right today we're going to go do my sauna distress signal. Unless something else that grabs my attention along the way. Because I always seem to lie at the start of an episode inadvertently. Not do it on purpose. Um, but I think I have also decided that I'm probably going to at least run around and get the scan stuff. Um, before I do um, the before I do Rannoch stuff, I'm gonna try to run around and get the scanning stuff after this, after Misana, I'm gonna run around and scan stuff. Uh, I would like to leave Novaria for when we get Tally, because I'd like to bring Tally um, on that one. I don't know if she says anything in particular, but um, but yeah, how exciting. Oh, this one's like, this one's like really spooky. Okay, where is... Oh my gosh, yeah, this one? It's just your way. Just your way, it's one of my, it's one of my least favorite. <laughs> but also one of my favorite. Um, it's, it's really, really interesting. Um, did I just... Signal confirmed. Yeah. Like I just ran into something. There, nope, have everybody hush. Let's see. So we are in Asari territory. The system broadcast had the first warning that Reapers had come through the mass relay and the mangled metal around the planet indicates that the Reapers did not appreciate their presence being advertised, but it was a VI run system. <laughs> its most valuable deposits are cobalt and polonium, which netted it the number three spot on a list of amazingly poisonous planets on the popular vid show Your Awesome Galaxy. Uh oh. The Reapers appear to have destroyed the camera drones as well as any scientific stations the Asari may have maintained. So it's a hardy, very winter planet. Uh, Tritagos's colonists are fighting the Reapers in a guerrilla war, their best resource being submarine vehicles that can slip under the sea ice to mask their heat. Unfortunately, these have not proven good tools for taking back population centers from the Reapers, and for now, the colonists will have to be satisfied with commando action to ha harass their synthetic oppressors. So I do like reading these. Partly because I'd like to just see the planets, but also, as I've mentioned before, it's nice to see they, they'll do like little Reaper updates sometimes on some of them. Bridge mining planet, woo, okay. Phylus is named for a trickster figure in Asari mythology, a crafty animal called a manel that seduced Asari maidens who then gave birth to hideously deformed offspring. In the tales, Phylus is caught and punished, but they serve as a warning to young Asari not to initiate a bond with anyone they cannot trust. Or maybe not with animals, but if it's an animal, like it just, like you could say like a crafty entity, you know. I guess no, I don't know. There's a lot of like animal trickster or animal like uh, mythological figures that are sentient enough to have children with other entities, I guess. <laughs> but I was like, that's interesting. That actually, that previous one um, kind of seems to foreshadow a little bit, I think, of what we're going to run into. Uh, the has abundant supply of zeolites, which are the Asari used for water purification, an agent and detergent, and a shielding material for disposal of radioactive waste. Despite centuries of colonization, the Asari have developed limites at a modest pace. The planet shows no sign of resource exhaustion. It's because the Asari, out of everybody, are the most forward-thinking. Like, thinking to the future. These two, this, this planet and the other gas giant, are named for a semi-mythological pair of twins from Asari antiquity who ruled neighboring city-states and had a lifelong dialogue about the best form of government. As the legend goes, Shastesia died before a vision of a democratic republic could be realized. Her sister, Madokos, then took up the cause, sacrificing personal power so that all free landowners in her city would have a voice. Although historians doubt that the changes were entirely altruistic, pointing to uprisings that demand representation, the development was a step towards modern Asari government. It's interesting how things can definitely be changed. Like you, you read this, and it, there is definitely a grain of truth in in this, and in maybe in other tales, you know, like that are similar to this. But it's like maybe they actually, you know, were vehemently opposed. Like the one was like didn't like this idea of like a democratic republic, but upon the other one's death, she became like a martyr almost for the cause, kind of. 
Um, and maybe she killed her. It's like, oh, she died before her vision. Oh, no, her sister. Did her sister kill her, you know? But in the story, it's kind of like whitewash, where it's like, oh, after her death, she took up her her ideals. And it's like, maybe out of guilt or something? I don't know, you know? Like, things can be changed so dramatically. And then, like, history as an interesting way of, like, codifying it into, like, fact. But it's like, is it? You know? It, I just, I find it fascinating. It's frustrating, but it's fascinating stuff. There. Oh, I think I got them. Lace Lasus is an unpopular garden world with characteristics just outside the comfort zone of its desired population. Its gravity is a little too high, says he's a little too virulent, and the soil inhospitable for growing food. Further information is difficult to come by. The Asari government is uncharacteristically silent about Lasus. Normally, a garden world settled so long ago would be highly populated, but the little light pollution can but little light pollution can be seen on Lasus's night side. Population unknown. Hmm, crazy. Weird that the Asari they have secrets? Secrets, maybe? Oh, I, it is kind of funny to me that we found, like, uh, a signal, or some sort of, I can't remember how we acquired it, but we acquired, you know, the Asari are looking for someone to help this particular planet, and it's like, I don't think they would broadcast that. Knowing what I know about what's here, <laughs> like, I don't think they would broadcast that. To be fair, they did try to send, they did try to fix it themselves. I think that's what it is, right? Like, we find, there's going to be, we're going to find what's left of an Asari commando unit down there. I'm pretty sure. And, um, maybe they're the ones that sent out the signal? I don't know. I can't quite remember all the details, but... Oh, yes. Let's bring Garrus. I actually, let's bring Liara. I'm pretty sure she has some interesting... Because Liara never met Samara, but I think Liara has interesting dialogue concerning this planet, but Garrus met Samara. Caden didn't, Edie did, but Javik didn't, and James didn't. Let's go. I'm excited, and I'm scared. What kind of, you guys good with your guns? Because I don't, I don't really care. Okay, this is where I put Liara so far. Got her final one to increase the singularity by a lot. And singularity, I think we already fully upgraded that one, but we've got warp, this is where we got warp at. So. Woohoo! Singularity is a fun ability. Did you have any information on the mission, Liara? I did, and I now understand why High Command wanted to hide it. We're headed to an Ardat Yakshi monastery. Yep. Ardat Yakshi? Like Morinth? Morinth chose to be a killer. These Ardat Yakshi isolated themselves to avoid that. But it doesn't mean they're harmless. Their urge to feed can be powerful. That's why High Command sent in commandos to investigate the monastery's distress. Okay, there we go. So what does the sorry High Command want us to do? If there was a chance the Ardat Yakshi could break loose, the commandos were to purge the monastery. Purge? You mean destroy? They would have brought heavy explosives with them, yes. Morinth was dangerous, but are the Ardat Yakshi this big of a threat? Morinth was just hitting her stride. Ardat Yakshi who kill leave behind astronomical body counts. It's why they can never be free, and why they're such a great source of shame to the Asari. That's why High Command won't rest until this place is destroyed. They'd never risk a single Ardat Yakshi getting loose. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is they're people. Like, I get it, like, right? Like, you can have these, like, you know, like, urges that, like, are difficult to overcome, but, like, it is possible, right? You know? And so, I don't know, maybe it's naive, but, like, condemning a group of people just because they were born, a diff you know... This, it, I, it vaguely reminds me of, like, the mages in the Dragon Age series, right? Where, like, they were born with, you know, powers that many people cannot understand and that they themselves sometimes don't understand fully, you know? And they all, they can be dangerous without proper training, you know? Um, but, I don't know. I don't know. Condemning someone to a life of being locked up just because of the way they were born... 
doesn't really seem fair. But then again, is it fair to let them run around and potentially, you know, cause mass body counts, you know, on like for the mages and for the Ardayakshi? It's like, well, we let them have their freedom, but now like 50, you know, men, women, and children are dead because one of them decided to go AWOL, you know, or go crazy, you know? So, I don't know. Don't assume anything. Maybe the Ardat Yakshi sent out the distress call. If the Asari want us to destroy this place, I need to know what happened. Agreed. Once we give a report to High Command, they'll stop wasting lives here. Perfect. I actually might reload because I actually want to go change my armor. I know that's, like, silly, but I want to change my armor. Nope, because I'm an idiot. I don't get to change my armor. I'm not going to restart the mission because that won't let me change my armor. Definitely not redoing all of that, all the conversations we just had. It's a gorgeous place for a prison. My visor's IR says this shuttle's warm. Recent visitor? It's so fine. I actually don't know if I... I'm pretty sure I brought Liara the both times I've been here now at this point. So, like, I don't know what would happen if you brought somebody else and not Liara. I don't know. I guess I, I could always go back. To prevent entry or escape, I wonder. Uh, uh. You hear the scary music? I'm gonna like, uh, ooh, I don't know. Hopefully I edit this out. We'll see. All right, I did turn it up a little bit, so hopefully it doesn't mess with the audio too much or I fix it in post if I see this, but, uh, cause it was very, very quiet, but that's maybe for the best. Maybe I should turn it back down. I keep wanting to crouch. Those screams, man. Those screams. What was that? Stay sharp. <sighs> Reapers. Looks like we know why the commando teams went silent. Ah. This monastery's out of the way. What do the Reapers want with Ardat Yakshi? Ah. Anything useful? A floor plan marked with the nav point location of a bomb. It's in some place called the Great Hall. At least it's no surprise Nuke gone to Chanka, but the commandos want this place gone pretty badly. Ardat Yakshi or not, evacuating this place would have saved a lot of lives. If there's no survivors, let's get to the Great Hall and set off that bomb. Why? That actually doesn't make any sense. If there's no survivors, let's go set off the bomb. Why? Why would you set the bomb off if there's nobody here anymore? You know? Like, the whole purpose was to blow up the place so that the Arda Yakshi wouldn't get out. I heard something. That was me. Sorry. What was that? Oh. Oh, this is uh, something for Liara, actually. For um, uh, her little bot, her little VI bot. 
A reminder, students are not allowed to visit each other's quarters or to meet in rooms unsupervised by staff. Students are also forbidden from extra net communication without approval by senior staff members. There are no exceptions to these rules. First offenders will have their free time revoked for a month. Further violations will be met with confinement. Our monastery is our shelter. For it to remain that way, we must make sacrifices. If we do this, I have faith we can continue to enjoy the order and peace this place has given us. Matriarch Galley. Call them students, but there are there is a wide age range. It's not just you know, kids. If there are kids here, actually no, you have to reach it. You have to get to reach a certain maturity level before it um, manifests. Oh, I just jump over. I'm not. I'm still not used to it. I keep wanting to crouch. Garris! Garris, come out! No! Come on, come on, come on, come on, quick! Okay. I mean, it is a peaceful place, right? Like, look how pretty it is, you know? Like, it's, it's, if it's a prison, it's a very nice one, you know? I mean, it is a prison, really. But, like she said, I think, too, we kind of come to realize if I find all the codex entries, um, this is a place that keeps them safe, you know? And like, so there's that, right? Mage Tower was similar, right? Where it's like, this tower will keep you safe from people who don't understand you, and it will keep you safe from yourself. From, like, you will get proper teaching, you will be cared for, you will be, you know, you, you will have a good education, like, you will have access to food, water, like, you'll be sheltered, you know, all this stuff. But the price of it is your freedom, you know? Even, as we saw, some of your personal freedoms within the tower. Like, in within here, sorry, within the monastery here, you know? The tower, though, the mage tower, I remember when I learned, if they, if any mage has a child, it is taken from them. That child is taken from the mage, from the woman, you know, who, like, whoever had the baby, whoever popped it out, that it is taken from them, and if it, Sees, seems to have like mage inklings, you know, mage powers. It's put into a different tower. Um, and if it's not, it is trained to be a Templar. So who knows how many of those Templars are mage's children, and they don't even know it, probably, and they're like, potentially, they probably, they, they probably keep track of the records so they wouldn't be like, you know, killing your own parent, you know, but you wouldn't even know it was your parent. You don't know, you wouldn't, they probably tell you you're an orphan, you know? Um, but yeah, you are not allowed to raise your own child, at least la from what I remember from reading. And I was just horrified. Like, you think the Jedi taking kids that have force powers is a little bit morally questionable. Like, ripping a child from its mother and its parents, maybe, you know, if the both parents, well, obviously both parents have to be in the tower, but like, you know, it's just, it's, that's horrifying to me and it's supposed to I think encourage them to not have kids but you put a bunch of healthy adults in one space like there's gonna be baby making you know <laughs> although I think I don't actually know in Dragon Age if there's I think there's a birth control charm of some sort I'm not actually 100% sure about that when I read Tamor Pierce a lot growing up there's a birth control charm like a magic charm in that one which I always thought was super neat but Anyway, I'm sorry, I totally got distracted, but it's hard to not see the parallels between the Mage Tower and the Ardat Yakshi Monastery. Mmm. I'm scared. Oh, never mind. I'm only scared and turned on in a second, because this is Samara's theme music. Very good. I almost didn't hear you. I love you! Yeah. <laughs> it has been some time, Shepard. You are a most welcome sight. The corruption here runs deep. Well, she looks so good. What brings the Justicar out here? My daughters have lived here for centuries, Garrus. I've come for them. Unfortunately, the Reapers had already infested this place by the time I arrived. Woo! Because you remember in Mass Effect 2, all three of her children are Arda Yakshi. Morinth was the one who decided to go AWOL. You know, and the way Mor- Oh, God, I just- Morinth and Thane, right? Just the way that they have this, like, serenity within the violence around them. 
Um, and Samara's is almost even more like honed, right? Like not only has she had centuries, but she's she has a cause. She's like a she's essentially like a very very strict paladin, you know, and um, like lives by a code, like a hundred percent. Um, but man, this is just so cool. She's so cool. I think she's just the neatest. You met me hunting down your other Ardat Yakshi daughter. Are these ones just as dangerous? Valer and Rila have followed the monastery's rules ever since they arrived. They've shown no inclination toward violence. And you're here to save them? Uh. They are my responsibility. And it's one that cannot be abandoned, even as our galaxy crumbles. I also like, again, bringing, like, that she responds to Garrus. I like in Mass Effect 3 that they do have a bit more... At least not a ton, but a little bit more like interaction in cutscenes with themselves as companions, you know, and in like in the ship and stuff like that. Let's go together. Maybe your daughters can tell us why the Reapers hit this place. I suspect they will have much to tell us. It has been centuries since I last saw them. We're out of time. We'll meet again. I will draw these creatures off. I uh, wait. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Let's go. She's so cool. She's such a baddie. Um. But if she, she, I don't know if she already has an inkling or what. Why they're here. <gasps> I remember. I know. They do, those do break my heart, you know? At least she had the chance to leave. It's too quiet. Are there any survivors? This fight didn't last long by the look of it. It wouldn't. The monastery only had a few guards to protect it, not an army. Yeah, but where are uh, some of the bodies, hmm? This is so gorgeous. I, I thought it was pretty even in the original version, but it's so gorgeous to see in the in the legendary edition i'm not ready i'm so scared i hate these things hang on wait they might they might not actually show up on this part i think they show up in a different part maybe call oh, those screams i don't know how bioware got those like what what sounds what what Welcome everybody to the Banshee! Hang on. We have... Let's see if I can... And... No focal length. I don't know how to... Or depth of field. You can't really see her yet. But you will go! See, this is what I hate! I really hate it, I really hate it, I really hate it, I hate that they do that. They do a lot of, uh, they're basically, what I, what I called them back in the day, is weeping angels. <laughs> and that's what they are, they are weeping angels. Oh my gosh, no, no. No, no. Why do you get 
to throw grenades too. Okay, fine. You know, it's good. Cool. You don't get to have the intelligence of grenade throwing. That used to be a person. An Asari. Yep. What have the Reapers done? Yep, yep. That is our first glimpse of. Well, technically, they are Asari. Husk type creatures. there's anything else to pick up out here they look so ready like oh my gosh this is that's actually really neat super neat uh do something mother you came as soon as i was able Shepard, this is Falaire, my youngest. She and her sister Rila are Ardat Yakshi. They have Mother, been... they have Rila. What? I saw some of those creatures take her into the Great Hall. I've been trying to get there. What are the Reapers doing here? Harvesting us. They're turning us into... Into those... monsters. Please, you can't let that happen to Rila. The Asari thought the Ardat Yakshi were to blame for the attack. This is our home. Most of us are grateful to be here. The monastery is a place Ardat Yakshi can achieve peace. Valer speaks truthfully, Shepard. I vouch for her words with pride. I bet she doesn't hear that very often. Samara doesn't seem like the type to give uh, overly, you know, uh, like, praising words all the time. Then we have to find Rila fast. The Great Hall has a bomb in it. A bomb? What, didn't you come to rescue people? I did! We'll try, but we can't leave this place standing, Falaire. You sound like the commandos. They didn't stop to help anyone. Falaire? I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize. Valer. The Great Hall. She's looking for Rila. I came here to you know. The commandos didn't. Look at she's we'll so cool. It is Please funny though. Swift. The camera does very much like to look at her boobies. Um but yeah. Oh my gosh, just you guys wait and see. I think there's maybe more, in, it's in the Codex entry. Just you wait, just you wait and see. It's really, really sad. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, it's very, very their, their story is very, very sad. Um, maybe I'll edit that spoiler out if I'm paying attention. So, haha, -ha, because it's, oh, it'll tell itself in time. I don't need to say it out loud yet, but... Anyway, thank you all so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, but to especially Reese Galito, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. And an extra special shout out to Adam, my tree tier patron. Thank you so, so much for your support, my friend. I very much appreciate it a lot. And I hope you're doing well. And I want to give an extra, extra special shout out to Christopher, my forest tier patron, who has gone above and beyond in his support of me and the channel, who leaves comments and is just super, super wonderful. And I just really appreciate you a lot for all your support honestly thank you so thank you all again for watching and i hope to see you in the next one